With its four-year anniversary looming, Global Mobilization's Update 1.5 has been released, the primary focus shifting to the equipment of units, refinement of existing assets, and general battlefield experience. To keep this digestible, this will actually end up a video one of a possible three, such is the substance of this update. We've got a lot to discuss, so we best get to it guys. So a short while ago, I was kindly invited by the developers to take part in a private playtest, showcasing this newest update. This was of course a no strings attached offer, and I was free to record everything and anything really. Now on the surface, you may be thinking refinements or experience sounds a bit like fluff, but as always, these guys have delivered with even more content and assets on top of the wealth of content already on offer. What type of content you say? Well, how do I put this? As a little kind of icebreaker, I asked the devs to explain the update in three words or less. Five update in three words, just three words. It can be either oh. items or features. What would you say? I, I, I it's could a use single word. words. Yeah, go <laughs> on, go shit. for it. Yeah, two words, wacky shit. <laughs> <laughs> this has become the affectionately chosen internal name for this update. I knew at this moment I was in for a treat. You see, the 80s might not be the most technologically advanced style of warfare going, but there was, at the time, a few weird and wonderful attachments. You might have piqued your interest with this bit, but you're gonna have to wait for the nitty gritty on the equipment, weapons and vehicles. But for now, I insist you stay because we're about to cover something just as cool. Now, to me personally, and possibly quite a few out there, I have never lacked respect for global mobilization as a whole. In fact, it's a wonderful creator DLC with great quality assets, but I always felt it, it needed something. Something to make me want to fire it up again and again, especially in a multiplayer setting. Well, SOG Prairie Fire had Mic Force, Western Sahara had the Extraction Game Mode, and CSLA had Operation Lipno. Let me introduce Global Mobilization's Force Recon. Please note that you won't find this within the included mission files. It's actually going to be available on the workshop and it should be available now upon release. This was actually a conscious decision by the developers just for the ease of updates and for you as a community to go kind of nuts with. Now, Force Recon is a fully dynamic special forces mission for up to eight players in which you are sent behind enemy lines to gather intel and disrupt enemy forces, ideally without being seen. You're probably wondering how this differs from community made missions such as say, Dynamic Recon Ops for example. Well, let me break it down for you. After two sessions, I like to think of Force Recon as having three pillars, which will all play a part in some way or another during your playthrough. Pillar 1, Recon, which is your primary objective. In this mission, you're actually conducting reconnaissance. In fact, there is a whole game mechanic revolving around the collection of intel and surveillance and the submitting of that information to HQ, which we'll touch on uh, momentarily. Pillar 2, Action. Of course there's going to be action and the amount will vary depending on your transgressions, whether that's bumping into unseen patrols, conducting a raid to destroy vital enemy assets, or maybe just slipping up by advertising your location when you're checking in with the HQ. And then there's Pillar 3, Escape and Evasion, the art of doing the business, escaping the area and avoiding QRFs, search parties, choppers, vehicles, you name it which is possibly the most satisfying feeling if done so successfully. Let's start with Pillar 1. So, reconnaissance in particular takes an interesting route here. The mission has an allocated recon points goal you must reach in order for your unit to consider the mission complete and be able to return home across the border. The amount is, of course, adjustable by the host in the lobby parameters. There is also destruction points and penalty points, which again we'll naturally cover in a moment. Recon points are acquired by taking photos of enemy units with the included camera and also by triangulating and correctly marking enemy positions on the map. Triangulating, Hasbo. Yes, that's right. This mode, for full effect, has to be played with advanced map options off. Apart from a starting position marker, you are left to your own devices. No magical GPS, no dot on the map stating where you are, or where your squad mates are. This is the 80s guys, map reading and navigation are your best friends in the wilderness. 
do not, I repeat, do not be put off by this. Now, personally, I'm quite a casual armor player, and yeah, I found it a bit daunting, maybe for the first 20, 30 minutes, but trust me, in no time you'll be looking for landmarks, checking your compass, checking your map. In fact, if anything, it actually benefits gameplay. You and your squad mates could have marked out a route on your map beforehand, only to be ambushed or separated. No idea break. where they are at the moment. We break contact, head west. Oh, here we go, MG's Shit. Get out, get out, get out. Where from? So the real world application of rally points comes into play here, designating meetup points should anything go wrong, or giving you just a, a much needed like five minutes just to catch your breath before you plan your next moves. And at times, the tension can be palpable. You're observing an enemy installation, then opening the map and you start following the road nearby or perhaps some terrain features, trying to place that marker just right. All the while, you've got enemy patrols that could be walking 100 meters or less you know, in front of you. It just changes the whole dynamic to our usual offerings in armor. Now, perhaps you've remained undetected and have catalogued some enemy dispositions. Best get on the horn and tell HQ, right? Especially since all this catalog information you see on the screen currently will become irrelevant very soon, which kind of simulates the concept of outdated intelligence. Simple radio call, right? What can go wrong? Sure. But again, it's the 80s and you're not the only one listening to the radio waves. Which leads me to pillar two, action. Every time you submit information, the enemy will try and triangulate your position. The points accounted from spotting those uh, gepards on the map. We've gotten, we've collected about 300 now. The bad news is by radioing it in, we are basically lighting up like a giant light bulb on the map for the enemy with their radio detection equipment. And they're gonna come here and Not just by radio either. If you've caused a bit of a ruckus, then it's gonna help the AI hunt you down. An insight into the game mechanic behind this is that every time we stir shit, we gain heat, and the heat dissipates over time. But of course, if we gather more, it will take longer to dissipate. And the more heat we gather, more units will be sent to collect, uh, to find and, and hunt us down. Essentially, as the developers put it so aptly, your squad generates heat, so to speak, over the play session. This introduces a kind of risk versus reward mechanic. You may have a thousand intel points in the bag, the intel's still relevant and in date, but once you bank it or call it in, you're gonna have choppers. Yeah, it's low, it's, it's coming low. from the northeast somewhere. From where we are, they are about Vehicles deploying search teams and flares popping off all over. Oh, truck. Oh, oh that's shit. bad. That's bad. Yeah, yeah, they popped up a flare. We should get out of here. Proper recon of a compound or area can also reveal side objectives such as destroying a depot or even eliminating a HVT. Now, with this being a fully dynamic mission, we had no control over what happened during playtesting, so I didn't get to see every little objective. It's unfortunately one of these things that are uh, roll of the dice, you can't force these situations. Oh no, it's, it's one of them, it'll organically happen. Mm -hmm. And that makes it so much more special. Yeah. Ooh, butterfly! <laughs> <laughs> This was even after a three hour playthrough, to which I was advised I hadn't even seen the majority of the stuff on offer here. This was obviously very reassuring for the replayability factor of this particular game mode. Anywho, back on topic. Destruction of these assets can yield destruction points. These points can also get your green light for coming home. So if you prefer action over stealth, then it kind of has you covered here, ah, but with a very small caveat. We are not aiming for mindless destruction here, needless killing of wandering patrols or seeking engagements for the sake of it will more than likely result in penalty points. There was a lot of information in the session, but from what I can gather, destruction of vitals in enemy camps or side objectives will result in destruction points. Uh, but tackling lone patrols in the forest, which haven't seen you and pose no threat to your immediate mission, will result in penalty points. 
I would need to do a bit more research on the ins and outs of this system, but as it stands, it promotes stealth first and foremost. But rewards, what could I describe it as? It rewards controlled and directed aggression, which naturally leads on to pillar three, escape and evasion. Just like in real life operations, sometimes it goes good and sometimes it can go horribly bad. Before doing anything that could potentially expose your squad, you need to be thinking about avenues of escape. Where's the nearest defendable location? Where are the enemy most likely to come from, etc, etc. This game mode doesn't force you, but rather encourages you to communicate with your teammates, and everyone has a great role to play in this. Talking of roles, the radio man will be your only point of contact with HQ, however radios are heavy, weight management becomes an issue, as does the weight of the new attachments you can add which support this spec op playstyle. Your team could be in the field for up to 3 hours, maybe more, depending on your points goal, your playstyle, or you could be dying within the first 30 minutes. So in the initial preparation phase, it's a gentle balancing act between movement and fire superiority. However your venture into Western or Eastern Germany ends, you'll be greeted by this rather nifty after action report. It tracks your movement and times throughout your playthrough. Awesome to see not only for the players, but the content creators as well. Normally you'd probably have to do something like this in the editing phase of your video, but now GM helps you create your very own armor free story. Oh, and did I mention that they plan on this game mode being compatible with existing official armor free maps and maybe a select few custom ones as well? What about factions? Yeah, they've got you covered. Uh, 20 so far, if I recall what was said correctly. Is it open to configuration? Sure is. In fact, the mission is on the workshop for exactly that reason. Ease of official updates and for you as the community to think about with it as well. And of course, the golden armor free question, how is performance? Well, let's, let's face it, as good as armor free lets it to be. That's to say, for a massive game mode, it was very smooth. We played on a dedicated server, but was assured this runs very well on locally hosted games, perfect for a quick operation with friends. So by now I've probably painted a decent picture of what's going on here, some incredibly fun spec op opportunities. If you want to be even more stealthy, well, for those eagle-eyed viewers watching the intro, you may have noticed some bolt cutters. That is awesome. There we go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and now we go through. And now, now imagine this with searchlights ahead. Uh, the, yeah. Oh yeah, the immersion factor intense. In the dark. Now, bolt cutters can be found in the miscellaneous or the, the special section in the arsenal. You can use these to cut through metal ball defensing, barbed wire, and how cool is this to actually cut through and disable power cabinets on the streets in all the various towns and villages around Wefferlingen. As well as just being generally awesome by promoting immersive stealthy play, the great thing about this is it actually works out of the box. It's not tied to the mission itself, there's no scripting required. You can load up in the editor, get a unit, equip it with some bolt cutters and try this out for yourselves with no further user input. I've now gone and mentioned that word, immersive. So 1.5 introduces military clutter and furniture modules. Uh, those pesky aliens which had stolen all the armor free furniture now return somewhat in, in some degree. The clutter populates urban areas with a slew of new crates added in this patch and will match nearby building orientation. Achieving a much more uniformed and grounded look if you're trying to just generally clutter the area. The furniture module on the other hand populates the buildings within the chosen area with pre-configured furniture setups. Whilst not truly being random, you will get well-constructed sets and it's, it achieves a much more believable effect than the randomised solutions we see in scripting and on the workshop. On the subject of furniture, there has been tons of new items added. But let me just say there's actually 15 items just relating to stationary alone. That's to just give you an idea of what's being added here. 
Now, the developers wanted to bring uh, a few notable items, uh, including one of those uh, for the Black Tar Drinkers to the forefront. I'm not going to show you, but you will see it and you will use it and you will clap with delight. I'll Honestly, I'll just leave it to you guys to discover. And there's also a new couch, which the team felt immensely proud of. And just like the 80s wallpaper, it be tripping balls. Now let's talk about some berms. Yes, wonderful trench-like objects that come with or without clutter. Two interesting talking points here. Firstly, just like the popular mod Grad Trenches, these berms will inherit the texture of the ground it's placed upon, as you can see here in the video. Secondly, notice when I either place or move a cluttered berm, its cluttered content will change. Gas cans, posts, crates, debris, it all changes. This also applies to some of the work desk variants as well. Now, if there's anything you want to count on with the GM team, it's the little details. The content is lovingly crafted and it shows here. Now, I'm roughly 15 minutes into recording my voiceover on Audacity now, and I've not even touched on the texture overhaul and content overhaul. It's probably a video into itself. Pretty much everything has been improved or refined in some way or another. The developer's standouts being particularly the BRDM2 and the SPW40 in the Burkle department. And on the weapons front, we have the AK platform. Any remaining issues with authenticity have been addressed with distinguishable differences between East Germans' AKs to those made in the Soviet Union. To the untrained eye, these will be missed out. I've missed out on them until they were pointed out. But for the initiated, everything from factory markings uh, to the finishings have been addressed in some way. There's even a boatload of customization options for the new vehicles, which you'll see in the following video. I've only really touched the surface of the overall scope of update 1.5. We've still got the new weapons, equipment, and vehicles to go, and I already feel like I'm jumping around more than Skippy the Kangaroo. So I'm going to start wrapping it up here. New assets to one side, which we haven't even explored yet, to be honest. Uh, the new game mode, in my opinion, is a nice compromise between the casual and hardcore play base. And in conclusion, 1.5 makes GM not only visually appealing, but it now has, thanks to Force Recon, the play me appeal as well. For those who have been sitting on the fence all these years due to the mixed reviews from its, let's say, say a bit of a rocky launch, I can now wholeheartedly say this is a massively different prospect now. I invite you to take the plunge, team up with some friends or randomers in the community and just give it a whirl. For now, get out there, check the changelog which should be in the description or comments below, find some friends and go play some GM Force Recon, that's all I've got to say. And I'll be back to you very soon with the weapons, equipment and vehicles, which as an added bonus I'm going to include some developer commentary on as well. So you'll get a bit of a history lesson, I know I certainly did. Um, it's a thoroughly enjoyable experience. So yeah, I'm going to leave it there, guys, and I'll catch you very soon. As always, have fun and bye!